Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Joe at Quad Specs, and today we're continuing our reviews and testing of 1S battery chargers, and we're looking at the AO Coda CX610HV, standing for high voltage. If you haven't already, make sure you check out our playlist where we've reviewed and tested some of these other battery chargers already. And check out quadspecs.com where we have a full list of 1S battery chargers along with a comparison of all of their features and functionality. The first thing you'll probably notice about the AO Coda is the form factor is quite a bit different than the battery chargers we've tested so far. It's longer and not quite as wide. Um, and the batteries plug into the side rather than into the top of the board. So uh, when they're plugged in, they're horizontal. And I'm not sure that's my favorite design just because you've got the weight of the battery that'll slowly pull on that connection. Uh, long term, not sure if it's an issue, but it seems like it's maybe not the best design for that reason. Um, but then as far as the functionality, the inputs that are available are the XT60 connector, which can take a 2S through 6S battery there is a three and a half millimeter DC connection here that takes a 12 volt input and also a USB, a micro USB input, which would obviously be five volts. And then it has an output here for a USB that would also be five volts. So we'll go ahead and plug this in and take a look at how everything operates with these two buttons up here. We've got a forest battery plugged in and we did not have to change any settings because it's got some internal circuitry to regulate the output voltage. And it, you can see here it's scrolling through and just saying that we've got a 16.7 volt input and it's a four cell uh, battery. And if you look real close, there is a button on the left that's got a V slash uh, negative on it. And the button on the right is A slash return. So if we hit the left button, we'll see 14.8 volts. So what this is telling us, it's, it's the uh, cutoff voltage to protect your battery that you have plugged in as your, your source. So we can change that by hitting the minus button. And then as soon as you get to the voltage that you prefer, we'll go to 15.4 volts for a 4S battery. And then you just hit the right hand button, which is enter. And then it goes back to the main screen. So that's how you change the cutoff voltage. And the button on the right is how you change the current settings. So uh, we'll just go th scroll through here. Sorry, you use the left button to actually adjust the current output. And this is a 0.1 amp through one amp output. And since we're doing 260 milliamp hour batteries. We'll go with, we'll start with uh, two tenths of an amp and we'll hit enter. And that's pretty much it for the settings. And once we plug in these batteries, it'll scroll through and it'll tell us what the voltage is on each one of the channels. Okay, so we're ready to do our first test. We'll see if the 200 milliamp output is correct or accurate compared to what we have for the settings. And it's right at 190 to 200 milliamps. So it's really close to what we have it set. We'll just try one more port to see. Port three is also 0.19 to 0.2 amps. So right on what we set it at. So now we've got everything hooked up. We can actually change that setting. As soon as we hit enter, it'll update and change the output current. So 0.29. Okay, so what you're seeing here, watch this light kick off and it's resetting. I think this thing has troubles uh, with the internal circuitry. It's looking, it's seeing this meter and it's thinking that there's something wrong. So it kicks out and then it reestablishes its current and then it kicks out again. So we didn't, there's no issue uh, like 0.1 to 0.2 amps, but then as you go up higher, it's like it, uh, it has a problem with that, but we've tested it without the meter in place and there aren't any issues. Yeah. See again, we're up 
a half an amp and we're right around 0 0.7, 0 0.8, but it does keep kicking out every once in a while. Uh, but as far as accuracy, um, the output is right around exactly what you have it set at. And if we go back down to 100 milliamps, again, we don't have that issue. So there's some kind of issue with uh, the charger's internal circuitry seeing this meter and thinking there's a problem, so it kicks out. So why don't we take this off of here. And we'll go ahead and just plug in a battery and I'll show you that we didn't run into that same issue when it's just the battery installed. So we'll go 0.4 amps again. And as you can see, it, that light doesn't kick out and it doesn't reset the output current. So it's not an issue with the charger. It's just, it's trying to protect the charger from, I don't know if it's, you know, a voltage or a current issue. It doesn't want to overload, but that's what we're seeing. All right, we have all six of our 1S batteries plugged in and the red lights are indicating that each channel is charging and those will slowly turn green one by one as they reach 4.35 volts. And right here we can see on the display, it scrolls through and it shows you which, what each channel is at right now. And <clears throat> as far as the current goes, we have this set to 0.3 amps, so that applies to each channel. There's 300 milliamps here, 300 milliamps here, 300 milliamps here. And with this charger, you can't change that per channel. So you can't have half an amp here and a third of an amp here. It's all, all or nothing. So we've chosen 0.3 amps right now, so that's what we have on each channel. So we'll let these charge up, and when they reach 4.35 volts, we'll take them off and use our battery tester to make sure that we did reach that terminal voltage. All right, we are all green, so we're gonna go ahead and start disconnecting these batteries. Uh, they're telling us around 4.35 volts on all of them. We'll go ahead and test it with our Beta FPV battery tester. 4.37 volts. Again, 4.37, 4.36, that one's a little lower, closer to 4.34, 4.35 or 3.6, and finally 4.34. So it's pretty consistent. It's within a couple hundredths of a volt on all six of those batteries. So overall, this is a very well-built charger. It's probably our favorite of the bunch so far because it has a little extra controllability. And the only issue that I see with it would maybe be that the uh, batteries plug into the side, putting a little bit of uh, pressure on these connections when everything's plugged in, but overall the AO Coda CX610HV is one of the best chargers we've tested so far. So if you're in the market for a new charger, don't hesitate to pick one of these up. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, be sure to like below and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.